Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode, we're going to introduce you to the iterator pattern, one of the design patterns that is built into most OO programming languages and uh, particularly Python has nice features that allow you to implement the iterator pattern. So what is the iterator pattern? Well, it's if I want to, if I have an array and I want to visit each element of the array, if I have a collection of a list and I want to visit each element of the list, if I have a collection of objects that are unnumbered, unenumerated, I want to visit each element of that. If I have a set and I want to visit each element in the set, the iterator pattern is how do I go from the start to the end of the list? So I have a little animation here to show starting at the first element, then moving on to the next element, then the next, then the next, then the next, the next, the next, the next and finally to the end and then the iterator pattern should know when the list finishes. So that's what an iterator pattern is. It iterates or visits each element in the list. In normal programming languages we would have two methods that would allow us to achieve that. Uh, a method called next and a method called done. The method called next allows us to move the pointer one across to visit the next element of the list. And the done method is something we check to check if we've reached the end of the list. That's it. generically speaking in Python, it's slightly different. Um, clearly, uh, in a programming language without uh, any design patterns, we could do it quite simply. We just say, while we haven't reached the end, so while we're not done, do get the next item on the list. So the item is assigned iterator.next and then do whatever you want to do with the list and then end file. So we're just looping on the condition that we haven't reached the end of the list, that we're not done with the list. And then we're inside the loop, we're saying get the next element continuously. So that's how you do it. Um, in Python, we have, we have the equivalent of next and done. Next is called underscore underscore, next underscore underscore. And it's a method that returns the next element of the list. And the done method is a uh, uh, a, a method type, an exception, I really think of it as, it's called stop iteration. So when st stop iteration occurs, it means we've reached the end of the list. And Python also has an additional built-in method called iter underscore underscore iter underscore underscore, which makes the object iterable. So it makes it possible to visit each element of the list. This is worth mentioning for a minute. If I have a list of items, I have to make it possible for me to visit each item in the list. If it's an array, that's very easy to do. I go to the first element, second, third, fourth. If it's an unordered list or a set or something like that, where there's a lot of different elements and there's no particular order, I need to convert it into an iterable list that is that I can visit each element of the list. So the iter element takes in a blob and makes it possible to visit each element of that blob, whatever the blob is. So the iter iterator pattern itself, the pattern, the template, the, 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 the recipe that we use for each iteration um, has two parts. It's the iterable part to make the object iterable and then the iterator part, which does the actual iteration. So here's the iterable pattern. The iterable pattern at the top, it's a class, and it's class iterable, and it ends with iterable at the bottom. It has two methods inside it. It has an I and IT method, which just sets a particular value to the value in that object, and it has an iter method, and the iter method returns the iteration of the particular value we're on. So, to call the to, to do that to return the iteration that means we need to have an iteration class as well so let's look at the pattern for the iteration class or iter, iterator class the pattern for the iterator class has three methods on the left here we can see the two as we saw before an i and it one which takes in a value and sets it to the value of the current object and then in this case because we're counting we need to create an index if the object already doesn't have an index, so we set that, start that as zero. And then the iter pattern just returns whatever value comes in. Now, in our case, we, we need to get a next as well. So how we define a next, in general, it would look something like this. It would have, um, based on some condition, probably uh, while, we're, while we're at some point, set the value to the current value, add one to the index, because we're counting on, return that value, otherwise raise an exception 
with stop iteration, and stop iteration means we've reached the end of the list. So that's a general pattern. But now let's look at an example. This example counts numbers. And there's three parts to it again. There's the iterable part, the iteration part, and there's also a bit of code we need to run to make it execute. So the iterable part, it's exactly the same as the template. We take in a value, we set self to value, we take in an iteration. Uh, this program is called my count iterable, iter iterable, so we return my count iteration. And then the class my count iteration, it's got three parts again. It's got the INIT, takes in a value and sets the index to zero, and the iter bit just returns self. The next bit in this case is it's a counting, so how the counting works is we've got an index that stores the current value and we've got a, a variable called value, and that value is the maximum length of the, of the count. So if we want to count from 1 to 4, let's say, we'd set value to 5, and it would be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, because index starts at 0. In this case, index gets self, um, self in, index gets added 1, then we return that value, and then if, when we reach the end of the count, we stop by, by raising stop iteration. The code in terms of how we run it, this is the execution code. We create an instance of my, my count iterable up to five. We produce a list out of that, then we create an, an iter of that, and we call that first count iter. So that's the iterable version of the iter iteration. And then we do a loop and say, keep printing out the next value of first count iter. What does that all do? Boom, it prints 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's what all that code does. Now, you know and I know that if we just wrote code saying for counter in range 0 to 5, print counter, it would print 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that is an extremely complicated way of doing a very, very simple thing. So for counting numbers or for traversing array, these patterns are completely unnecessary. Whereas if we're doing something complicated like ordering, counting, or, or traversing values in an object. So if we have 10 objects, I want to visit each one, iterate through each one, then using this approach is better. But for simple activities like counting 0 to 4, I think probably a for loop is grand. The difference, of course, is a for loop isn't very object-oriented, whereas the iterator pattern, because it's got its classes and INITs, is very object oriented but for simple cases there's absolutely no need to do this when we're traversing complex structs, structures complex uh, objects and classes or complex data types it makes sense to use the iterator pattern otherwise just use a simple loop so thanks very much we'll see you on the next episode <laughs>